Hi friends, I'm Olga Kölsch and welcome to my studio. Today we're gonna paint a set of five meadow flowers which you probably have seen so many times around and uh, I hope you like the process. So let's start. I prepared very bright lemon yellow to paint meadow buttercup and I'm starting from the top and as we paint very loose I mainly paint, as you see, brush strokes just to imitate the flower and I leave a little bit of space in the middle. And for the middle I'm taking one of the um, brownish or orange colors and with small tipping I create the middle and I distribute this orange color into the petals to make the imitation of a depth of the flower and to emphasize it I will add just a few tips of dark brown and I would like immediately start with the second flower, I guess. I just imagine it could be here. With the belly of the brush, I'm painting petals around. And this one will be looking to the right. And I want to leave a little bit of white space. Do not forget to leave white spaces in between petals. It makes the painting airy and uh, more interesting. So this one will be looking to that side and maybe another one to the other side, to the left. Again, with the belly of the brush, very delicate, well, very soft and very random. And while it is still wet, we could easy uh, <laughs> we could very easily add some contrast colors. I hope you could see well. I will make it a little bit closer. Just a little bit of darker color. And now we will paint the greenery. In this painting, we do not really much care about green color. You could take any green from your palette or mix. bud here and um, these flowers they have very specific greenery with some sharp leaves and now I with the tip of the brush and using some belly of the brush I'm painting um, different strokes just to imitate this, this interesting greenery. I would like to add some green here. I use olive green for this painting, for this green. I use olive green, it's warm and it gives the feeling that everything is covered with the sunshine maybe one more small little bud just here and we are done for clover i prepared a mixture of <clears throat> quinacridone rose and purple color rather diluted and i'm painting just with the tip of the brush 
with these um, sharp strokes and important that they all go to the central point. To make it more interesting, I mix purple and aquinacridone rose and I put some strokes underneath to make it fluffy and another bud another bud I will try to make a little bit more closed so uh, uh, and to imitate that I'm making a smaller and more roundish brush strokes like this and you see we get this clover feeling and in some places I just add a little bit of purple and I, I think would be nice yes I would like to make one more just here just same same moves small very small and <clears throat> round brush strokes around and uh, I leave a lot of white space in the flower to make uh, it uh, airy and fluffy so white space really plays a big role in watercolor painting and once you learn not too afraid to leave a lot of white space it really improves your your hand your style and now let's add some greens with the tip and belly of the brush i add some greens Usually on clover, green leaves grows right underneath uh, the bud and um, quite a lot, so I try to imitate this and I paint with the middle side of my brush and I try to make uh, the tips sharp but basically all these leaves I get when I just put my uh, brush on the paper and it draws by itself one more here to make it natural and now the fun part <laughs> is to connect everything something green here just one stem I imagine that it goes just like this always try to make the stem a little bit thinner rather than thicker it will look much nicer more elegant and more pretty so I paint in the leaves um, the greenery of clover just with the side of my brush and I connect everything maybe one yes I would like to paint one big bottom leave here sometimes it's not very convenient to um, paint in this direction so uh, I try even with the bottom of the brush to paint rather sharp strokes maybe something green here
what else could be done? I would like to remove just a little bit of um, color in some of the greenery parts to make it look more, more close to the clover leaves. Because in the middle of uh, their leaves, they have these very special white areas. And that's why I just with a clean and dry brush, I remove a little bit of color in the middle of the leaf. Not in everyone, mainly on those which are on the top, on the sunshine. Just like this. And it is done. For wild poppies, I prepared an uh, orange mix. We have a lot of wild poppies uh, which grows in our garden, in all the streets. They are usually here, no way they are orange and yellow. Mm, might be red in your, uh, in your country, in your place. And with very diluted mixture and with the belly something just with the belly of the brush I paint rather thick strokes for poppy wild poppies have four leaves for petals sorry and they have very thin petals so i'm trying to imitate this and with dry and clean brush i make some white areas to add more contrast and uh, the inner part is rather dark I will come back a little bit later to the inner part. Right now I just add some sepia, brownish color, to make the base for this. I, and I will be back here a little bit later. And one more. I think it's always nice to have one more. I will paint it more open. This one will be more open, one petal second petal a little bit more orange for for the variety and to imitate this uh, very tiny structure of the petal sometimes i just keep the white area and paint wines with the tip of the brush very random Our purpose is to paint the recognizable shape, but not to go into the details and make it just artistically nice. And if you paint it on the uh, each flower on a separate piece of paper, um, you could have a very nice, lovely collection for your summer cottage, for your summer house. put them in frames it will really 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 look nice in dry and clean brush and remove something or sometimes i just add something with orange just around just like this and now we put all together into the green, into the greenery, into the stem. Stems usually are very curvy and, and now I want to add just one small little tiny bud here, almost closed. 
and uh, as in the bud um petals are very um, very dense so it uh, the color also could be more intense no need to use that diluted color just like this and some greenery greenery is very specific in poppy so with the tip of the brush i just go for some greenery and paint it like this and one big nice leaf i think will look very interesting here I combine several shades of green. It's uh, warm green, olive green, and um, bluish green for the, for the variety. Because it depends, uh, the color of uh, greenery depends on how it look on on the light, how light come goes through the leaves. So uh, it's uh, always nice when you add. At least two different greens from your palette of course you could mix your own greens or use the ready one greens uh, just do not stuck with one color once you think you're painting too long with the same color just change it and switch to something else and now last details I take uh, Van Dyke, it's very dark brown. Um, I try to avoid black colors in the painting. And with tiny... And with just tiny strokes, with the tip of the brush, I paint all these details in the middle see it's still not dry enough um, so it's a little bit goes to the sides the color and but that's actually that's Mm, that's um, two two petals. It would be nice if we divide them. For example, with just a little bit of darker shade. The same is here. So where where is the contrast? Uh, the eye, our eye really likes contrast, and it's always nice to add some. Same here. I just randomly paint with the tip of the brush. It's more um, more look like I'm painting shades or vines. Just like this. And we are done. Now I'm painting sweet violet. It's they are very tiny, cute, very soft flowers, adorable, and they are very pleasant to paint. Five leaves, five petals. Just five petals, and to add variety, I add some crinacridon rose in some parts, and with tip of the brush, I add the middle. I add the middle. Mm, I would like to add one more. Basically, it's just the brush strokes. 
with the tip of the brush, with the belly of the brush. Middle part could be a little bit darker here. And we drag out the color where the petal makes this curve. So sunshine goes into it and um, to make the volume I add I keep it white this area and I paint darker out here like this maybe one one flower will be looking um, aside so it will look like this and now let's put everything on a stem stems are very tiny and delicate here Stems are delicate, but the greenery is uh, rather big and has a rather big volume. If you compare the greenery to the uh, to um, the flower part, so um, for us it's important to make the greenery in this case very light, not too heavy. And to get that, we use very diluted green and even remove some color from, for example, from this leaf where I went a little bit too hard with, with colors. Uh, one, two, maybe the third leaf will here, so it will make the composition finished. I want to put this, um, this third leaf behind, so I use very diluted color and I try not to touch the stem here, so it would not uh, dissolve. And some areas here and well, what else um, we could bring to our flower I do not like that it it's too parallel one to another so I very carefully extend this leaf here and once it dry, I will just go one more time on the stem to emphasize it, so we see that it goes uh, in in the foreground of of the leaf. But now we are no, we are not done. It looks a bit weird when two flowers and they are not um, connected. So it's be nice to do something. Something like this. Now it's done. <laughs> Here in this small little tiny place left, uh, I will paint Tensi. And of course, <laughs> you could take a, a white blank paper. I kind of like to squeeze every, everything in one paper maybe later on I just um, um, create a pattern with this and uh, for me it's kind of fun to find um, the place in between but of course for you it's absolutely fine if you paint each and every flower on a single piece of paper 
and it actually could be very lovely collection so pansy has its clusters of flowers and I connect all of them with the tip of the brush I will probably add a little bit more and Tansy has a um, relatively thick stem but as I told <coughs> um, better to paint stems thinner than thicker so it will look really nicer and pleasant for an eye and more elegant and of course mm, we add in some greenery you know you see i could even make the stem longer and add some green here around the greenery has very sharp edges so i with careful moves just with the very tip of the brush i try to imitate this Um, these uh, sharp parts not try to paint all of them um, you just need a feeling when everybody could say aha I know this flower and that's uh, that's important and nobody will count uh, really if that's a right amount of leaves are they grow or are they painted or, um, in according to the fl uh, flower scheme etc we just painting an impression and uh, make it recognizable This one, this one, I want to add some green here and connect to the main stem, which is now in this case it could be a little bit thicker, but just on the bottom part, and some greenery around. So now I, I'm coming back to the yellow part because right now it's um, you could see much nicer what is missing and I want to add these tiny little details and just with the tip of my brush I paint this round mm, small round petals around and I could add more but it's always nice to add some contrast for example with orange color around especially for some bottom parts I keep my brush vertical 90 degrees to the paper and make these tiny little dots don't um, try to paint um, just the so uh, circles with plain color it will look um, maybe childish in a way really spent a little bit of time for this tipping and at the end you will get really 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 nice fluffy sunshine beautiful effect so here it is thank you so much for watching 
please uh, leave some feedback in comments which flower was your favorite today and which flower you would like to paint next subscribe my channel see you next time bye bye